Gospel of December the 3rd, 2016, a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus went around to all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom, and curing every disease and illness. At the sight of the crowds, his heart was moved with pity for them, because they were troubled and abandoned, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is abundant, but the laborers are few. So ask the master of the harvest to send out laborers for his harvest. Then he summoned his twelve disciples, and gave them authority over unclean spirits to drive them out, and to cure every disease and every illness. Jesus sent out these twelve after instructing them thus, Go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, make this proclamation. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse lepers, drive out demons. Without cost you have received, without cost you are to give. Gospel of the Lord, praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Let us continue with a peak of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, O people of Zion, no more will you weep. He will be gracious to you when you cry out. The Lord will give you the bread you need, and the water for which you thirst. No longer will your teacher hide himself, but with your own eyes you shall see your teacher. While from behind a voice shall sound in your ears, this is the way, walk in it. All right. The merciful God has shown himself by incarnating. The second person of the Holy Trinity, the Eternal Logos, incarnated himself with the unique will of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And the aid of the Holy Spirit in the blessed and pure womb of the Virgin Mary. He was working as an apostle himself, as a first disciple of God, the first sent, the one who has reconciled us all with the Father himself and the Holy Spirit on his cross with his blood. He is going, well, alive in this world, going around everywhere, teaching the gospel of the kingdom, curing, and feeling the deep pang of the mercy. Splachtemai is the word in Greek. A deep compassion, a deep pity for everyone. They are like a sheep without a shepherd. They are like sheep without a shepherd. No one to cure them, to help them, to guide them, to feed them. And he goes on to say this, the harvest is abundant, the laborers you pray to the master of the house of the harvest for laborers. And immediately he sent his twelve, giving them the authority and instructing them, go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And I would like to ask you one thing, especially I'm speaking to you, my dear brothers, not only all of you who are baptized, but all of you who are, who are ordained. Have we gone out to look for the lost sheep of the house of Israel? Or have we missed the mark? Have we have had deaf ears to the voice of God? This is one thing that we should keep in mind. We have to go out, look for the lost sheep. And that is not going to be easy. We cannot accomplish that by remaining in the parish or in the office. We have to go out and visit. And not our friends or acquaintances, but go and look for the ones who have not heard about the Lord Jesus. Or who have heard but have distanced themselves. That is dangerous, but we have to do it. Then he says, 
proclaim the kingdom? Have we done it enough? Have we gone out or do we just keep proclaiming it while we are in, in the mass with our homilies and stuff like that? It's easy to do that. It's hard to go out. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse leopards, drive up demons. Why is it that we don't do those things anymore? There are a few of us that do. But the fact is that most of us have rationalized, have reasoned, have become too reasonable, thinking that this is not necessary anymore. And we have become lazy. We have become oh, enthroned in our own high chairs, not doing what we should do as ministers, as servants, as slaves of our king. We should go out and work. We are burying the talent in the ground, keeping it there to give it back. What would you say, my dear brother, the chief of the parish? Will you tell the Lord, Lord, you gave me uh, 500 parishioners, here's your 500 parishioners back? Is that how you think that you will be able to tell the Lord that you've done your, work, your good work? Is that not analogous? Is not that the same about the one who buried the talent in the ground? It is. Remember the one who won five or ten. So if you received it with five hundred, perhaps you could give it back with five thousand. But how are you going to do that? We lack prayer. We lack uh, fast fasting and we ourselves lack good deeds many times we think that it's enough for us to have given off our lives to become priests but yet we do have some means of our own let us go back and look into the in, into the saints lives say for example San Pio of Pietelcina he used to take out of his own bread to give to the poor, of his own bread. And like that we can hear, we can read about many more, many all over, all the saints would do that. To take away from what there was what theirs and give it back. And pray and fast and believe and understand what is it that our King, our Lord God is telling us to do. Go to the lost ship, proclaim the kingdom, cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse lepers, drive up demons. It is so sad to me to hear so many priests that are afraid or even would deny that there are demons would try to rationalize, saying, oh, well, in reality there are no demons because all we do is just act badly, but there is no real demon outside. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. You're afraid, that's what you are. And if you're afraid, would a coward soldier serve at all in war? Of course not. He would turn back and run away from the battle line. When you, when we prostrated ourselves in order for we to be ordained, we accepted the charge of being soldiers on the battle against the demons. So we must believe and we must fast, we must keep on praying and we also must do good deeds so that we are strong enough, that we are clean enough that the finger of God could work in us in order for us to defeat the enemy, all enemies. Our king has already won, but he needs, and he really doesn't need, he wants you and me to follow on his footsteps. Let us pray, dear brothers, for each other, and I ask you and I beg you to pray for us ordained ministers until we meet in heaven. God bless you all, brothers.